Good morning world. A lot of you probably heard about the 7.7 .7 on the Richter scale earthquake that we experienced here in Mindanao last night. It was pretty scary, I have to say. Definitely the longest earthquake that we have felt here on this island ever since we moved to the Philippines about four years ago. We felt a good 20 seconds of movement in the house and I'm up on the roof right now just checking for any cracks or any damage that we can't see from the inside. So far everything looks okay. I have to say though, there is something about December that never sits well with us here in this country. Having gone through the super typhoon and all the flooding that happened in the country and now an earthquake this year. Luckily we weren't sitting anywhere near the epicenter, we were a good 200 kilometers away, but the effects of it were felt very far around this country. Many people were messaging us, so we just want to say a huge thank you to everybody who sent us their messages of concern. It really does make us feel like we are loved and cared for, because it doesn't matter where you are in the world, the minute you find out news of stuff like this, we can see that there is concern for us and you know we feel like we're at home for that reason we have this kind of like extended family of people who are looking out for us so thank you for that we do appreciate it from the heart it is a windy day apologize for any of the wind noise Sasha is just out walking poppy while I'm up here checking on the roof we can see that the PVC drain pipe from the big house has fallen down last night but apart from that that seems to be it our solar panels are fine, our Starlink is fine, the roof doesn't seem to have any cracks in it that weren't there before. So I'm happy that the house survived without any damage. As you can imagine we had long chats last night about the place that we live, the dangers that we face being like in a typhoon belt and near volcanoes and earthquakes and fault lines and we did say that one thing that we are appreciative of is we have experienced a lot of disaster in our life over the last 10 11 years forest fires typhoons earthquakes we went through a big earthquake in thailand it was 6.9 but we were sitting right on the epicenter and our house was shaken to bits but we have experienced that many people have never had from our side of the world and that makes us feel in some ways a little bit safer because we know how to survive a typhoon, how to survive an earthquake and a massive forest fire in Portugal. You know, whether we were in Asia or Europe, we've gone through these big events that have triggered us and given us some form of experience that you can't really get from reading books or going online. You know, it's something that you have to go through. And we are in a better position now than we've ever been having solar panels to give us energy after a disaster, like hoping that they don't get damaged, having satellite internet so that if we ever go through what happened with the typhoon and no one was able to communicate with us for several days. Now this whole island, there's so many places that have Starlink. So as long as you have a generator and the satellite, you could reconnect and tell the world that you're okay. We can publish news in this way through vlogging. Like I'm putting this video up about the earthquake that happened several hours ago. So you guys can know that we're safe. It's like on the day information, this kind of stuff we didn't have one to two years ago. So we're very grateful that we have these experiences under our belt now and we can teach these things to our child as well. And as long as nothing bad befalls us and we can go these thing, through these things and come out well on the other side, it's actually strengthening in some way. We have a much greater understanding of why Filipino people are so resilient after having lived here alongside Filipinos and seeing what happens here and how they recover. So as many of you probably know, after you have a strong earthquake, one of the things that you should check for is whether there's a tsunami warning. And there was a massive tsunami warning last night, which made us very, very scared. They basically said between the earthquake event, which was 10.37 last night to midnight and beyond, there could be waves over one to two meters above high tide that could last for several hours. So keep an eye out for that and be vigilant and have your preparation in place. So Sasha and I created a go bag. We just got all of our valuables into one place. 
we didn't wake up Story. We just kind of like went to her room, made sure everything was still in order and created an escape path in case we needed to go, go. And yeah, we were just looking out the window at night, trying to see if anything was happening. And because it was pitch black moonlight, I couldn't see anything. And I didn't want to go down to the beach, of course. So I got our low light camera out, but it was even too dark for that. And I was looking through the camera to see if there were any waves coming or any receding ocean. These are the kind of things that you go through when you hear that there's been an earthquake. Where would we have gone if we were to be in a situation where the waves were coming high? Like, they would have to come very high to affect us here. I think this house is probably about six meters up or something. But we did say like the highest ground is on top of this hill here. So had we seen waves rising down here at this level, we would probably just walk up there because for us to get to higher ground here, you know, away from the coast, we would have to drive through valleys and into flood zones and possibly through earthquake cracked roads to get to the higher ground. And funnily enough, if you guys know that we already bought land here in Shargal, our land that we have is actually the tsunami escape zone. So we saw pictures from our neighbor last night. There were people lined up in the street outside their house. Well, not outside their house, but in the road by where our land is, because that's where you go. It's one of the highest grounds. But to get to it, we would have had to drive down in and come back up again. So we stayed put and we just made our uh, preparation from here. I'm gonna go back in now because I'm getting very hot standing up here on the roof. I can see that everything seems fine with our system. How was your walk, Poppy? Hmm? How did you feel about the earthquake last night? Poppy didn't really react to it, to be honest, which was interesting. She was like asleep on our bed. She had her ears up a little bit, but she didn't really react. Ooh, some fur coming off there, Pops. You need a brush. There are some cracks on the roof, but these have been here from before and nothing actually got any bigger or any worse, did it? No, we've done a sweep, we've checked yeah. and everything is fine. How was Poppy on her walk? Absolutely fine. She was running around, loving life. Yeah, Poppy doesn't seem to react to earthquakes, does she? No, Shalako was down there with us as well. He was fine, he was picking up coconuts and, you know, normal day for them. Yeah. But yeah, it was a little bit worrying wasn't it last oh, night? Definitely. Well, now we have uh, our Christmas decorations up. Now a disaster <laughs> comes. It seems to be the theme of December. Oh no. Story didn't wake up at all until I, we went in her room and turned on the light. Then she woke up but we were like I have to be ready to just grab her if we need to. So I was just telling her on the second or third shake the reindeer banner was like really going for it and I said do, do, do they normally do that? I was like oh no it's an earthquake. Yeah. <laughs> they were like wobbling around over there. That's what we were using as our gauge now. We were checking to see if these were moving and, and also these are our cups. This these is cups. our earthquake gauge. Yeah. If these are moving then we know that something's happening. Yeah. If they're still we're like it's okay. The first thing we do is just look at the cups isn't yeah. it? And also we were saying like well we've got like a bottle of rum up there we've got all our coffee gear and glass on the top shelf and none of that fell off. Whereas the earthquake that we experienced in Thailand, that was a 6.9, so it was like almost one whole Richter less. Yeah. And that was throwing glass out of the cupboards. But also that's because that, that was like right, pretty much under where our house was. We were like right on top of the earthquake, whereas here they happened out at sea. Yeah. So the further away, whereas if that 7.7, .7, had happened underneath our house, then oh, it yeah, might they be would, a different story. There would so. be big damage, wouldn't there? Yes. Get some light in here so I can have a look through Story's room. We didn't have a proper look in here. Again, there's some cracks on the walls, but these cracks mostly were here before. I don't think there's been any additional damage. That one looks a bit bigger. Story's room is like our safety bunker. Now when there's any disaster or any kind of danger, the first thing we do is we come here because if there was an earthquake, you're supposed to get to an interior wall. Yeah. If you can't get outside, that is, you have to get to an interior wall first. So we were standing, not in a doorway. Yeah, That's we a were, misconception. We were just out here, but next to the interior wall, which is why I reached around to turn on Story's light. And yeah. uh, I also packed a go bag after, we, after it happened. I mean, while it was happening, my heart started pounding. <laughs> I was, we were drinking mint tea as well, and the 
when it first happened, my tea was like splashing out of my cup and then we were like, oh no, it's an earthquake. And then it didn't stop. And we're like, okay, it's a big one afterwards. The internet was quiet for a bit, wasn't it? Yeah. We were checking Instagram, Facebook, no one was really saying anything. We're like, oh, okay. We started getting messages from like personal friends. Yeah. Like after about five minutes, but then the <laughs> flood of information came about 15, 20 minutes yeah. later, I'd say. And I think that's kind of a factor into the anxiety levels for me going through the roof because once you start listening to other people and seeing what other people are doing and it just kind of adds that extra bit of oh worry should we be doing something what should we do should we do we need to evacuate and so many people going well, do we need to evacuate we've got children what should we do where should we go mm. we're like oh no <laughs> yeah, it fuels the fire definitely yeah, it does. and you can see like how different people react to different situations like yeah. we we we're quite calm about these things like we were like okay let's see what happens next whereas other people are like going online preparing for the worst straight away and yeah. it's like i don't know what's best sometimes yeah. and for us i feel like you know we we think about it logically it's better to be calm and think things through yeah. than just rush to your nearest evacuation center which might actually yeah. be more dangerous yeah. than where you currently are um, which is what happened in the storm yeah. if we left here to go to the evacuation yeah. centre, it would have been way more dangerous yes. for us. So I did pack a small go bag, a change of clothes for us all, water bottles were all filled up, we, we put Poppy's collar on so that she was ready to be taken out of the house. Yeah, it strengthens us in a way, doesn't yeah. it? One thing that we did was look at all the fault lines yeah. in, around the world. <laughs> and I tell you, that's quite scary in itself. Once you actually look at the earth with all these lines all over it of where uh, main earthquakes happen that's just like wow it just makes you feel so small so fragile isn't it <laughs> yeah. yeah i also downloaded an earthquake app so after the storm i downloaded many wind and wave apps so that we could check up that kind of stuff but earthquakes i didn't have anything for that so i downloaded one of those and it basically gives you live alerts of any warnings that might be going any tsunami warnings and just kind of looking at the amount of earthquakes that happen every single day and it, it's shocking like you don't really realize it i mean i guess that's a good thing not knowing that because i mean i live my life every day not knowing these things because i don't feel them but then the minute you start tracking stuff like that your anxiety goes up so we're just finding a way to process all of this right now i'm feeling calm and relaxed and we've checked the house uh, Papang is okay as well, like Mary Jane said that he came to check on us last night but he didn't come in, he just kind of like saw that everything looked okay so I know that he's okay, he's like right on the other side of the land and there's a dip in between the two so you know if there were any tsunamis or floods or whatever the two houses would be cut off like the coastline house and the roadside and like that's where the car is as well although we don't have our car right now because it's being repaired when this is part of your daily life and you are forced in a way to deal with it, I feel that it does make you a stronger person, more prepared for like what it is to be human because it does occur to me that the life that I used to live before in my safety bubble felt very much like that. You know, it feels safe, but if something does happen to you there in that bubble, you would be absolutely unprepared. Whereas we have gone through so many things now that I feel if something did happen to us, we would be way more ready for it. And it just makes me feel like I'm in more control of my ability to handle this stuff. It's that time again. It's this time again? Yes, Poppy. I think you're going to get chicken bites. Are you ready, Poppy? Are you ready for the grand results? And she got chicken bites. And How do you know they're chicken bites? Do they have an, an image on them? No, but they are. They, they look like this. Oh. Look, chicken bites, nibbles calming treats, soft leaves training treats. So all three of them that she's had so far have been the same? Yeah, no. No, no because the first night she had this, and the second night she had this, and then she had this, which is today. Look at that tongue, she's licking away. Oh, they're bigger than I thought, look. Oh yeah, they are, aren't they? I wonder why you get two, because on the back, look how many there are. What, you mean, oh yeah, there's like a big hat?
handful, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Don't tease me. Give me those biscuits. Okay, hang on. Pull. Oh. I'll do another one. Do another one. Pull. Yeah. Oh, that was a good one. You hear that slap? <laughs> yeah. Again, again. Oh. <laughs> Different one. I've been excited for this all day. I've been waiting for. <laughs> it's only been a few hours since you woke up. <laughs> I've been waiting for this, this, or this. No, no, eh. or this. I right, bust it open. Let's I've find out what you get. I've only had two. Okay. Oh, hang on. Which one is that? I don't know. It's this. So it's green and pink. I got. Sour watermelon. Yeah, Sour looking watermelon. good. Okay, I, I said I was gonna mi mi uh, share these with you, the whole family. <laughs> oh. That's nice. Oh, that's nice. Can I share them as well? Can I have some? You've had your advent calendar. It's my advent calendar. You have another advent calendar in the morning. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Do you want to share them? Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. 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 Oh, we make everything from scratch in this house. Yeah. Sometimes I make bread, we make our own cookies, we make all dinners and meals from home. <laughs> it's just a nice way to live. I, I don't really, we live too far away from stuff to be going yeah. and getting takeout all the time. Yes. Story has just finished recording her fact of the day on Patreon. Story's fact of the day, mice. And we will be publishing a weekend vlog on there, which is exclusive for patrons as well. So check out the link in the comment for that. Busy day today. Yes, <laughs> lots to film, lots yes. to edit. Well, I'm going to do the shout out today, which goes to Eva Menes. Thank you for becoming a member. We appreciate it. It means a lot to us. If you want to become a member yourself, hit that join button. It's under the videos. Bye. Thank you, Poppy. And if you do hit that join button, you will see that there is a new tier right at the bottom, which says name in the credits. So name in the credits used to be only exclusive for our patrons, but now you can also get your name in the credits as a YouTube member. So check that out if you're interested. Check out Story's free video, her fact of the day, which will also be in the comment down below. And we will see you in the next video tomorrow. Bye. Thank you.